This is Seven National News and in our top story. The UAE Vice President, Prime Minister and ruler of Dubai, His Hana Sheikh Mohammed bin Rashid Al Maktoum, has chaired a meeting of the Cabinet which has endorsed the launch of the Industrial Coordination Council to boost the industrial sector in the country. The Industrial Coordination Council will be tasked with developing a national strategy to boost the industrial sector in the UAE, set key performance indicators and follow up on implementation, propose initiatives to boost cooperation and share experiences among government entities as well as with the private sector. It will also cooperate with various federal and local government entities and industrial unions in developing relevant in legislation supporting the sector. Commenting on the initiative, His Highness Sheikh Mohammed bin Rashid stated that the industrial sector in the UAE plays an indispensable role in development, being a cornerstone of the economy. His Highness added that the country aims to have a developed and flexible industrial sector, exceeding traditional models and having networking and investment meeting the growing needs of the markets. The UAE cabinet also addressed other items on the agenda and reviewed two health services related initiatives to ensure an improved health services system. These include an early diagnosis program for cancer and an initiative to attract talent to work in the nursing profession. The cabinet also endorsed the 100 work plan submitted by the Minister of State for Youth Affairs, which was previously discussed with His Highness Sheikh Mohammed bin Rashid Al Maktoum. The Khalifa bin Zayed Al Nahyan Foundation has distributed aid to nearly 3,500 needy Syrian and Lebanese families residing in the Lebanese border town of Arsal. It was mentioned that the humanitarian aid was provided as part of the UAE's response to the displaced Syrians during winter this year with support from the Embassy of the United Arab Emirates to Lebanon. The Director of Attaché for Humanitarian and Development Affairs Office at the UAE Embassy, who oversaw the distribution of aid in cooperation with various bodies of the Lebanese government, was quoted as saying that the aid was distributed to 625 Lebanese families at the office of the Hyatt Relief Organization at Fatwa House. UAE officials involved in the effort also highlighted that they are working with the strategic partners and government institutions to ensure that the aid reaches those in need and in their efforts is in keeping with the United Nations standards in terms of the quality and size of aid provided to the Syrian refugees and affected Lebanese victims. The Dubai police have received 45,705 calls through the number 901 in the last three months and 30% of them were inquiries about traffic issues. Brigadier Kamil Bhuti Aswedi, the Director of General Department of Operations Room at Dubai Police, was quoted in a newspaper as saying that out of those huge volumes of calls, 10% were inquiries also related to criminal issues. It was mentioned that the operations room also received 11,174 inquiries through its website and 2,276 through its smart application, while the number of people using the touch button services reached 4,650. Adding that inquiry calls increased by 48% last year as compared to the year before, Brigadier Aswedi also stated that Dubai Police has unveiled plans to transfer its call center to a smart police station that can provide its services through the number 901. He urged the public to call 901 to learn about the services of the Dubai police and to suggest proposals or complaints. New statistics from the Roads and Transport Authority reveal that the Dubai Metro has completed almost 50 million trips during the first quarter of 2016. According to the statistics, during the first quarter of this year, the Dubai Metro had served 49,913,698 trips and the Dubai Tram had reported 1,338,601 trips. Furthermore, the number of commuters on the red line was just under 32 million passengers during Q1 2016, whereas the Green Line saw just above 18 million passengers during the same period. As per the figures, Al-Riga uh, Al station topped the stations on the red line during that period, recording around 2.06 million passengers, followed by the Union station, which served 1.97 million commuters, slightly ahead of Burj Khalifa Dubai Mall station. On the green line of the Dubai Metro, Al Fahidi Station was top with 2.05 million passengers, followed by Baniya Station, which was visited by 1.64 million commuters, and the third was the Stadium Station, that were used by 1.46 million.
people. The push to plug Dubai into the global green economy continues as more charging stations are set up at petrol stations to charge the growing trend of electric cars hitting the streets. On Sunday, the Emirates national oil company Enoch stated that it had installed seven electrical vehicle charging stations at Enoch EPCO stations across Dubai. The energy firm said that the new charging units promote sustainability and are in line with the Dubai government's smart city strategy. With its partner, Dubai Electricity and Water Authority, the first seven charging stations were completed and commissioned in petrol stations in February, while two more units will be installed at new sites currently under construction in Dubai. Diwa launched the electric vehicle charging stations program last year, launching its first charging station for electric cars at its headquarters. And finally, in the bulletin. Details of an interactive production of the play Romeo and Juliet have been unveiled today at DuckTac, where cast members gave a preview of some exclusive scenes of the play for the first time. At a media launch of the widely anticipated production, which involves a mixture of locally based actors and overseas stars, officials representing Constellation and the British Council Global, Shakespeare Live's project stated that the play is specifically designed for the local audiences. They added that they are immensely hopeful that the modern highly charged tale of love, revenge and death will engage audiences of every age as they mark Shakespeare's 400th anniversary this year. Most of the action will place in and around Duck Tag in the theatre backstage as well as in the lobby and art gallery. Giving a glimpse of what to expect in the play, a scene involving Juliet and her mother was performed in which Juliet's mother tries to introduce the concept of marriage to Juliet. It was mentioned that the audience who will be split into warring factions, the Capulets and Montagues, will follow the actors in different scenes and some lucky audience members there will also get the opportunity to have personal one-on-one -on -one encounters with characters during the play. Romeo and Juliet will play at Duck Tack and Mall of the Emirates for three nights on the 21st, 22nd and 23rd of April. The reason that we've decided to do a promenade interactive performance um, is because basically that is my background. That is what I've been doing in London, in Singapore, in Hong Kong. It's something that I think is quite novel for Dubai. I don't believe that we've ever had an interactive site-specific piece of theatre before in Dubai. So we're very much hoping that audiences find the novelty in it, um, enjoy it, find something new and exciting to embrace. Well, generally speaking, when we put on a piece of performance in Dubai, we have a very mixed and very diverse audience, um, which I think reflects the ethnic and multicultural diversity of Dubai. So specifically for this performance, we've actually set it in Dubai in 2016, using Shakespeare's language, but it's updated to a modern setting. So the Capulet family are a white Western family from Jumeirah, and the Montague family are an Indian family from Karama. Um, so we've looked at the sort of diversity within Dubai and actually set it here and now um, with that multi-ethnic diversity that Dubai compromises. So I think that's also going to be quite interesting. I play Juliet in Romeo and Juliet. Uh, there's been a lot of line learning, a lot of running around. The rehearsal schedule has been intense but incredible. It's wonderful to work with so many fantastic creative people. I love the spirit of creativity here in Dubai. It's really magical. I think there's a real excitement about her as a young woman. She's a very wise 13-year-old. Uh, it's not too hard to find that leap when you're really excited about something, really anything that comes across in life. If you can really hone in on that, it's a lovely moment when you can pick something special to be excited about. And she's excited about Romeo. It's been very interesting because uh, Romeo is a very fascinating character. He has a lot of shades to himself. So you see him being very deft and very impulsive one moment and then he's very endearing the other moment and he loves passionately and he wears his heart on his sleeve so it's he's a character with a lot of shades and it's just been very fascinating as an actor to explore him our uh, preparation not in general it's just been working with liz and the cast and getting to know him better and also exploring him for myself and it's been a lot of fun so i'm thoroughly enjoying it